Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Boisterous, joined today by Tough as we do some O gaming action out of the map Red City LE. Spying down here in the bottom left hand corner, we do have Kitao representing O gaming. He's actually in Freak's Clan for this game, but uh, he's recently been picked up by O gaming, and they sent us this game to commentate. So we're commentating this game, Tough. Mm hmm, and spawning up here in the top left, as our Green Protoss player, we have from Complexity, Vipro. It's a, it's a cool name. Mm hmm. Yeah. It makes me think of the Wolverine movie. Oh, shoot, Boisterous. I have not seen uh, a single Wolverine movie. You haven't? That's no. probably good for you. Because there's, really? there's, there's only been two, and Wolver oh. X-Men and the, the Origins one was absolutely horrible. Oh. It, it, you know how Deadpool is like the Merc with the mouth? No. They, they ended up turning him into the guy with no mouth. Oh. That could teleport and stuff. He was really messed up. I don't... I You know... Let's just forget about X Men or uh, about Wolverine's Origins or whatever it was called. Bad okay. Movie. Huh. That that'll be easy, boisterous. Since I've never <laughs> seen it. Yeah, that would probably it's probably going to be a little bit harder for me. It's going to be like trying mm -hmm. to bleach out the Avatar: The Last Airbender movie. <laughs> oh. Oh man, I lost so much respect for M Night Shyamalan in that movie. Yeah, very, very understandable. But we are actually seeing Vipro go for a gateway and then an assimilator here on the 15. You know, pretty standard, but it just means we're not going to be seeing, uh, you know, uh, cannon expand, forge expand. Yeah, which is pretty... I mean, it's pretty... It's usually used a lot. However, I can see why you wouldn't want to do it on Red City because Red City is mm. kind of an awkward map to actually check out your entire natural. True. Because... Um, First of all, the gap in it is massive. It's all on flat ground. You don't actually have a natural ramp. And then you have, like, this weird outcropping up to the left, which yeah. I've never understood the point of. Uh, it's basically for siege tanks. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's weird that they're starting to bring back those cliffs again. It's like the ones that were on uh, Sunken Temple. And it was like those cliffs mm. just had a giant marker on them that was like, mm. place siege tanks here. Right. I mean, even, like, Marines up there is really good. Yeah. Like, it, it's really good for Terran, basically. <laughs> like, Well, you know, that's 90% of the game tough. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, that was a good burn. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, we have Kitao checking out his uh, his little outcropping up there, making sure that there weren't any sort of crazy photon cannon rushes coming out up there. And I've oh. actually, I've never seen a game where that happens, but I want to see one where the, uh, <laughs> where the other guy doesn't actually get that information out, and he gets cannon rushed from that high ground. Because that from, has to from... be... The most from insulting there? way. Yeah, from there. That would be pretty pretty epic. That would be so hard to pull off because everyone checks up there. Yeah. I want to see a Bronze League game like that where someone just does not check that roof and oh. that gets completely owned. That would be hilarious. I'm sure that happens all the time. Oh, God. Man. All right, anyway, we do have the Zergling taking the completely pointless Zelnaga Watchtower in the center. Yeah. Uh, because I've never actually seen anyone, unless it's cross spawns, and I don't think I've ever seen cross spawns march units across the center of the map of Red City. I feel like that game would just be so long. <laughs> yeah. Because they uh, both get four free bases. Yeah. Yeah. It would Their be a little bit explode. ridiculous. Mm hmm. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, we are seeing, as I said, Vipro uh, eventually go for this expansion. I was curious to see if we were going to see him go for a quick third. Yeah. Um, you know, having gone for this kind of gateway Cybernetics Core expand. But um, I'm not sure how he's going to be able to do that off, you know, just gateways at this point. I mean, he does have the forge coming up, and this is a fairly early True. forge. Um, so he could probably go for it if he got, like, plus one zealots. And, man, Vipro... That is, uh, that's an interesting wall. Yet again, I am, of course, the interior designer of our little <laughs> pairing here. And, uh, man, this is something special from Vipro. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, at least it's solid. It, it's, yeah. it's good. It, as lo it doesn't matter how it looks as much. I mean, unless, you know, you're boisterous and you're an interior designer. But course, as long as there are no holes in it, then it's a good wall. I think the main issue is that the pylon is so exposed. And True. as soon as you take that pylon out, there's a giant gap in the top. And like this pylon can get almost completely surrounded by zerglings. But you could you could force field on top of that pylon. Yeah, yes, but I mean that's just wasting sentry energy, and that's a very easy way for a Zerg player to kind of just waste that sentry energy and then run the hell away. Yeah, but uh it looks like what we are gonna see though is a uh, zealot warp in, uh zealot timing on this third base with plus mm -hmm. one. And I'm curious to see if he's going to reveal these now. 
it looks, looks like, like he will. Might. Uh, oh, he's... although that's not actually revealing. There he goes. Yeah. All right, so he will be going right onto this hatchery. This hatchery will almost certainly be canceled, but honestly, this isn't a whole ton of damage for Katao to take. Uh, I would I would have liked to see Viper kind of just sit there and, and wait it out, and then as soon as the hatchery pop, then attack it. Because uh, yes. he would have had plus one, and he would have been able to kill a hatchery, which is much better than canceling a hatchery, because canceling hatchery puts an awkward delay onto your opponent's attack, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really do any real corporal damage. He, he didn't even take out this drone either. It's just kind of yeah. wandering around, waiting for uh, these zealots to leave, basically. Nope, but the uh, the drone's gonna... Oh my god, are you oh. kidding me? Wow, that, that drone just had like 10 seconds of heart attack right there as he walked right past the group of zealots. It looks like one zealot will be moving up here trying to scout out. Uh, he will be able to see the hatchery coming back up, but there's way too big an army for him to try to actually push in there. So uh, he's gonna get stomped right on back. And uh, this proxy pollen is going to get taken out, and really that wasn't too much damage for uh, for Vipro. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say another important uh, thing about that Zealot is that it saw this roaches, yeah. which is kind of making me wonder why he's still poking in here. Like, sea roaches go home, basically, if you only have Zealots. Yeah, I mean, I, I think with plus one Zealots, like, he can make it cost efficient against the Zergling Roach army. Well, but, uh, you don't really want to, you don't want to be cost efficient against Zerg player. You want smashing right. victories. And if it's on creep, then Roach oh, is going to yeah. kite infinitely, so like yeah. that'd be crazy. Mm. But anyway, we are seeing Vipro actually go for Phoenixes off of this as well. Yeah, and they're scouted out very early, so uh, so Katao's going to know exactly what to do. He has four Spore Crawlers in production right now. Um, two at each base, uh, his mana is natural, and he's probably going to have another two coming down at his third base as soon as it wraps up. So uh, he's not really going to be in too much danger from these Phoenixes. They shouldn't be able to do too much. I, I still do kind of like this. It's it's a large map, so it's yeah. it's uh, it's good to have fast units that can mm -hmm. move around quickly, secure uh, map control. But it looks like actually Katu wants to do a little bit of attack or like at least a poke here, sending his roaches and links across the map. Yeah, I think this is mainly just as like a denial tactic because he knows that the that Vipro can't actually mm. fight in engagement against Zergling roaches because he has you know Phoenix Zer or Phoenix Zealot which is, is pretty bad for trying to kill off roaches, because if you lift up Zerglings, you're doing absolutely nothing, and if you lift up a roach, it's going to take all four phoenixes the entire lift time to actually kill it. Good point. Yeah. So we are going to have a little bit of a swing in onto the uh, fourth base of his opponent. He will be able to kill this thing off. I think this <gasps> is actually the second cancel he's managed, and oh my god, panic oh. force fields going down. That was actually a really awesome looking force field, but it didn't do much. Yeah. It's like, don't go into my natural, and he's like, okay. I'm not going in your natural. I'll be, uh, that sounds okay to me. I agree. But uh, looks like two Void Rays will be popping up for Vipro. Mm -hmm. Help him deal with this Roach Force. And I mean, if Katu had decided to go for that natural base, there could have been some damage done. There's only really a cannon there and Zealots at this point, basically. But it looks like he's rallying the Void Rays. There we go. Oh my god, he almost sent those Void Rays cross map, which would have been awkward. However, these Void Rays will be running back, and they will be able to clean up this Rocha of Force, or at least force it back away from that third base, which is really all he needs. Uh, we have a couple of Changelings running here, and will they actually be able to hit the main Zealot Ball? I'm not sure, but the uh, Phoenixes there did meet with some Hydralis there for a second and took some damage. Yeah. Uh, he's having a hard time finding somewhere he can do damage with these Phoenixes. Yeah, well, I mean, that's kind of what happens when your opponent just has Spore Crawlers. I mean, he's managing to take out mm -hmm. a lot of uh, a lot of Overlords, mm -hmm. but that's not really a game winner. Um, I mean, he, he's managing to, to keep his opponent down to two bases, which is good. Because uh, Kitao, I, I, what happened to this hatchery that got cancelled? Uh, I'm not sure I missed that. Yeah, I missed it too. I have no idea what happened there. However, it looks like we are going to have uh, the army from Kitao moving into the third base here. There are Hydralisks with this army, so they should be able to clean up these Void Rays quite easily. And actually, Kitao might be able to push in and do a lot of damage here, because uh, you know these Void Rays wow. are not going to be able to do a whole lot to these Hydralisks. And we are going to see this third base cancelled yet again, which is going to be super awkward for Vipro. Um, these Void Rays are doing their best to fight off against the Hydralisk threat, but the Hydralisks just do so much freaking damage to them that they're just getting crushed. Uh, we have more uh, Phoenixes coming back home, and they will be able to fight this off eventually, just with good micro. But uh, but it definitely took a lot of damage there for Kit for uh, Vipro. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, the thing is, Void Rays can get very good in the late game, so yeah. if Viker can still you know deny this fourth base, keep doing that, 
and secure his third base and just get a whole bunch of void rays, then you know he could still potentially come back from you know his losses so far. Yeah, and Red City is a very awkward map to take a fourth base on. I mean, mm. Katow has the fast army, so he should be able to take this one to the right pretty easily. But there's absolutely no way he's going to take his northern fourth base ever. Uh, just It's the same way with Vipro. He's never going to be able to take that southern fourth base. Because it's just it's so, so strange trying to hold on to that against your opponents when they're right there. Ah, good point. Good point. Um... We'll have to see what they decide to, decide to do, because, I mean, I think at this point, Ketu does need a fourth base. Yeah, he most certainly does. Um, he's managing to snipe off his opponent's fourth, third base enough that he hasn't needed it yet, but uh, right. Vipro is going to be able to hold on to that pretty much indefinitely. I mean, he has a very solid position up there. He has five, four, no, five cannons coming up right now, and those five cannons are going to be enough to hold that, or at least it, it should be. If it's right. not, it's gonna be it's gonna be a pretty scary situation for Vipro, and it looks like Katel is going to be going right for the natural, which has three cannons of its own, so it should be able to hold its own. But this is definitely an interesting strategy to go for, especially considering the fact that all of the phoenixes are on the other side of the map. Um, so we are going to have this little tiny split coming down here, and the Zerg force going to pretty much put itself right into a sandwich position mm. where the uh, where the Protoss army from the back is going to be able to smash along with reinforcements coming in from the west side. Um, and it looks like these Void Rays might get cleaned up here. At least two of them die while the rest of them escape into the main base. And hmm, with Photon Overcharge, he shouldn't be able to push in here. But uh, Vipro really does not have anything to actually fight this off right now. I mean, even with Phoenixes, there's way too many Hydra Risks. Yeah, uh, Kitu's doing a really good job of keeping on the pressure. Uh, keeping that Void Ray count really low, keeping the mm -hmm. Sentry count really low. You notice at the beginning of every battle, he focuses down the Sentries and then focuses down uh, individual Void Rays. So we're seeing some really nice micro from him. Um, but, you know, Vipro has managed to hold on to this third base so far. We'll have to see if he can keep doing that. I don't think the I don't think the third base is the one in danger right now. I think that Katao mm -hmm. really just wants to go for a smash right into the natural. Yeah. Um, and he definitely has the Hydras to pull something off like that. I mean, the right. charge lots are scary, but Hydras just do insane amounts of damage versus uh, versus those ground units. And it looks like we are going to have this engagement going down here, and all of the Zealots will be going down. We will see some severe damage done to the Void Rays here. It looks like the Photon Overcharge is actually going way too heavily onto those Zerglings, and it's going to force Vipro to actually call the GG because he just did not have the units to hold this off. Mm -hmm, yeah, he was just kind of whittled down slowly all game, like I said. Yeah. Um, nice micro, like a two, and uh, GG well played. Yeah, so anyway, Tuff, if anyone wants to follow you or yell at you for being bad at commentary, where can they do that? <laughs> uh, if you guys want to do either of those things, follow me on Twitter, at SC2 underscore Tuffy, that's T-U-F-F-Y. Yeah, and if you guys want to check out any other videos I produce, you can head over to youtube.com slash boisterous SC2. Man, I almost said user there, even though I don't <laughs> need to say that anymore, and you yell at me every time I do it. So anyway, guys, this is Boisterous. And this is Duff. Signing out.